Hi, Teacher Sam here. Welcome to Thornhill English Academy. Um, today we're talking about writing for the IELTS exam, specifically task one writing. What is it? Well, it's one third of your writing mark for a start, with task two being the other two thirds. So one third of the mark, it's still pretty important. We'll talk about task two in other lessons. So you will be marked in task one on your ability to present, organize, and compare data or information in the form of a graph, a chart, a table, a diagram, with a diagram meaning a few different things. A diagram could be a, a place, a process, a machine, uh, how something works, things like this. Each one has its own difficulty. You may even get a combination of two different types of data source, which you'll need to talk about. All of them, however, do follow a similar structure when it comes to writing. So your writing is always going to have an introduction, overview, and then a part where you compare, and describe the most important details, and most the key features, if you like, of the data. So we're going to figure out how to do that. As in other parts of the exam, you'll be graded from band one to band nine and using four criteria, task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy. Today, we're just focusing on task achievement. It can be a bit tricky, so let's jump into it. Let's talk about word count first of all. Oh, the word count for task one is 150 words. Now, of course, you can go a little bit over that, but try not to because firstly, you're going to waste time. And second, and secondly, you might be talking about detail that isn't really important. Focusing on too much detail is a feature of a band five. And we're trying to get above that, as you can see right there tendency to focus on details and also it means you're not selecting the important information but if you do find that you don't have enough words and you need a few more to make up the word count there's a few a couple of tricks you can do first of all you can extend your phrases a little bit so let's have a look at what that would be for example you could say the number rows you could do the same thing, but you know, using a lot more detail, a lot more words, but still, you know, is making the same point. The number displayed in the present chart for the month of October rose in a rather dramatic way over the given period between the fifth of October and the seventh of the same month. Same information, but here you've got a lot more words. Obviously, the number rose isn't what we're looking for. Also, if you're really stuck for word count, another thing you can do is simply add some irrelevant detail. Describe anything at all in the information, even if it's, you know it's not a key feature. Just to make up that extra 10 or 20 words. It's not great, but it's a good way to avoid losing a point for task achievement. Let's talk about overview now. Somewhere in your task one you must have an overview. This is a summary of the most important trends, the key features, the main idea of the information, whatever that information may be. Not having a clear overview is a feature of a band five or below and we need a clear overview to get above a band five. The overview is usually just after the introduction, right at the beginning of your task one, but you can you could also put it at the end. It doesn't make any difference for the examiner. And also, as you can see here, it can be one sentence, but it can also be more than one sentence. You can have two sentences, possibly even three. Just back to the band descriptors quickly, we can see that for the band six, it has presents a clear overview, band five, no clear overview and tendency to focus on details and band four confusing a key feature with an overview inaccurate data generally not really understanding the main point 
So we want to make sure we avoid that, of course. Understanding the data, really understanding it, is key. Another important thing you need to do once you have your overview is also to identify the other main points, the key features of the data, and present them, make comparisons between them. So first of all, the data you select should be relevant to your overview. It should match what you've written in your overview. And also, if you're comparing two things, they should make sense. Let's just highlight a few comparisons in this example here. We can see in this example that we're comparing the usage of three different types of transport system. And we can, that, we can see a lot of comparative language here. First of all, comparative adjectives, bigger than, smaller than, and in this case, most striking as a superlative. We've got likewise, we've got less serious, both not far behind. You need to have this kind of language, this comparative language for a successful task one. Let's look at why. For band seven, we can see, presents a clear overview, main differences or stages. Again, this is talking about comparing. All right, let's talk about the details now. So you've done your overview, you've figured out your main points and how you're going to compare the data. So let's move on to the details. You need to also present details which support what you've been saying up until now. And you need to be really careful that these details are correct. If there's too many mistakes, that's gonna lose you points and certainly get you below a band five. And we can see down in the band five and band four, there's gonna be more inaccuracies. And band four, there may be a lot of irrelevant, inaccurate, repetitive detail. This is what we want to avoid. If the examiner sees lots of mistakes in the details, they're definitely going to give you a band four. So how do we avoid that? Let's have a look. First common mistake, units. Look carefully at all parts of the data and don't get the wrong units or forget to add the units. For example, we can see here that the task one is about number of passenger railway journeys. And we can see that the unit is millions. So here we've got 1,250 million. This is really important not to forget that. For example, if you write that the National Rail Network is expected to reach a peak of approximately 1.2 billion in 2020. 1.2 billion what? We need to reference exactly what we're talking about here. Another common mistake is writing numbers as plurals when they shouldn't be billions instead of billion, millions instead of million. Here's an example. The National Rail Network is expected to reach a peak of approximately 1.1 billion journeys. This is a problem. Again, once or twice, not too bad. If you have it a lot, this is going to lower you to a band four for inaccurate detail. The same goes for amounts of money. Here's an example. 1.7 billion. This is how it should be. There's only one way it should be written, and that's what you need to do. Another common area for mistakes, which the examiners will notice, is the time period. This is really important. If we make mistakes with the time period, we risk, again, going below a band four. Sometimes there's no time period given. Sometimes the, the data doesn't change over time. Sometimes the time period begins in the past and moves into the future. Sometimes it's always in the past. This is going to affect, obviously, the verb tenses that you use, the type of verb you use. For example, you can't use verbs about change if there is no change over time. Let's look at a couple of examples. When there's no change over time, we call that a static data. When the, cha when the data changes or evolves over time, this is dynamic data. And obviously, these two cases, you're going to need to use different types of verb. Here's an example of static data. This data does not change over time. So if you use verbs like grew, increased, decreased, declined, you have to be very careful. The data isn't changing over time. Each part of the graph is showing a different section of the population. Poorest, middle income, and richest. So be careful again about that. 
here we have a dynamic chart. So this does show change over time. You can use verbs that show change, grew, fell, increased, declined, but you need to be careful about the time period. Is it in the past? Is it in the present? Is it in the future? And use your verbs correctly. So to quickly sum up, once again, a lot of it is about understanding the data. Take your time to look at the data, look at the information carefully, and make sure you understand it. Before you begin writing, look at the data, make a few notes, highlight any units, time periods, things like this that you could slip up on. And over above all, make sure you have a clear overview. We're going to practice making some overviews right now.